The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring young America's favorite couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. It's only 9 a.m. Mr. Nelson, sometimes known as Ozzy, got up bright and early this morning. How did that happen? Harriet tricked him into it by setting the clock three hours ahead and hiding a sun lamp behind the window curtain. Right now, he's in the living room reading the morning paper. What's the matter, Ozzy? Some bad news in the paper? Mm, no, not that I know of. Why? Well, you seem upset about something. Well, I wasn't going to mention it, but as long as you brought it up, I might as well tell you because it's getting very annoying. Annoying? What's annoying? Well, this is the third morning that David has wrapped up his lunch in the comic page and gone off to school with it. Oh, all right, dear. After this, I'll see to it that David wraps up his lunch in the financial page. No, I don't like to complain all the time, Harriet, but just try to remember I'm older than David. And as his father, it's my privilege to read the funnies first. <laughs> Okay, okay. We'll make you a charter member of the underprivileged fathers. How's that? Well, I'd like to have a dollar for every big grown-up man who reads Dick Tracy and Little Abner before he reads the editorial page. Oh, I know that. And I'll tell you why the funny papers have such a universal appeal. It's because they are basically sound. It's always a triumph of good over evil. Well, it's the same way in real life. If you do good things for people, good things come your way. Of course, I'll admit that every once in a while you do a good deed expressly for somebody, and the return comes by slow freight. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you think that was funny? I gave it two small chuckles. I thought that was all it was worth, frankly. You know, I know it sounds like corny philosophy, but I really think it works out that way. If you do the right thing, it'll come back to you every time. I think everyone has had experiences along that line. I'll never forget the time I had a birthday party when I was ten years old. I gave my little dog a piece of my birthday cake. And the very next day, I got lost coming home from school. And it got darker and darker. Yes, go on. Oh, boy, I was really lost. Well, what about the little dog and the birthday cake? Oh, he didn't like it. He spit it out. <laughs> Did uh, Gloria bring in the mail yet? I don't know. She's out in the kitchen. I'll call her. Gloria! Gloria! Did you call me, Mrs. Nelson? <laughs> yes. Did the mailman come yet? Yes. The mailman's been here, Mrs. Nelson, but it's pretty uninteresting stuff. A lot of bills again, I suppose. Oh, good morning, Mr. Nelson. I didn't see you there in that sports suit. <laughs> you look uh, very serious this morning. Well, we were just discussing the theory that if you do nice things for people, nice things will come your way. Do you subscribe to that philosophy? No, I just subscribe to the Ladies' Home Journal. <laughs> No, Gloria. Mr. Nelson means that if you spread kindness and good deeds, it gives you a wonderful feeling of well-being. You get a nice warm glow all over. Don't you get a terrible hangover the next morning? <laughs> well, the kind of a glow I mean is the pleasure you get from doing little things for people. Oh, yeah. Now, for instance, every morning when I go to work, I pick up a couple of servicemen. I tried that once, but it's impossible without a car. <laughs> Gloria, you don't seem to quite get the point of Mr. Nelson's theory. He means if you do nice things for others, nice things come your way. Oh, yes. Like what happened to my poor nephew, the boy I was telling you about, Mrs. Nelson, the one who was framed. Framed? Yes. How was he to know he was driving that stolen car over the state line? Well, my goodness, when was that? The night he held up the gas station. <laughs> well, how does that fit in with doing a good deed? Well, they sent him up to Alcatraz and put him on bread and water. So he did something nice for the warden, and the warden did something nice for him. He did? Yes, he put him on raisin bread and water. <laughs> oh, fine. No, Gloria, the kind of good deed I had in mind is just a little different. Now, I'll give you an example. For the past three weeks, I've been going all over town, up one street and down another, 
tracing down every lead and rumor in order to find an apartment for friends of ours who are coming out here from the east. Yes, and personally, I think that was carrying a good deed program a little too far. You just can't get apartments nowadays. It's really terrible. Do you know my cousin and her family are paying $60 a month for two rooms with an adjoining... An adjoining what? I don't know. They haven't been able to get the door open yet. (laughs) Well, before we all agree that it's impossible to rent an apartment, I'd like to break the news that I got one for Randy and his family. Why, darling, that's wonderful. Well, Mr. Nelson is a wonderful man. Oh, thank you, Gloria. Can I have this afternoon off? (laughs) Well, I guess so. Oh, thank you. Oh, before you go, Gloria, make sure that all the dishes are washed and the beds are made and phone the grocer and give him tomorrow's list. Roger. (laughs) You know, I just couldn't seem to make Gloria understand what we were talking about, could I? I don't know. I think she got the general idea. Along with the afternoon off. Say, who is this Randy that you got the apartment for? Uh, Randy Biglow, don't you remember? We met him in Toledo, Ohio. He's the president of the Randy Biglow Little Dandy Zipper Company. Oh, really? Yeah, you see their slogan everywhere. Little Dandy, the zipper that's different. Well, what's different about it? It goes sideways. (laughs) Well, you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. I still don't see how in the world you located an apartment for him. Well, it wasn't easy, I'll tell you that. They're arriving tomorrow morning. He didn't dare leave until I wired him I had the place all set. Does he have a family? I'll say. He has his wife, four children, two dogs, and his mother-in-law. Yikes. That's what made it so difficult. You know, most places won't rent an apartment if you have a (laughs) mother-in-law. Did you say they're arriving tomorrow? Yes, I did. Well, then, don't you think it would be nice if we went over to the apartment to check and see if the people who moved out left it in good order? Say, maybe you're right. And I'd like to take along a little something for the living room table. Oh, that's very thoughtful. I want the place to look bright and cheery. I'll go get my hat. Yes, and bring a vase to put it in. Well, come on, Harriet. I think the apartment's right here off the lobby. No, wait a minute now. This isn't it. Just a minute now. Say, maybe this man knows. Uh, Pardon me, mister, but do you live in this building? No, no, I don't. I'm a doctor. I've just been visiting a patient. You don't happen to know where I could find apartment 101, do you? Well, yes. That's the apartment I just came from. Some friends of ours are moving in there tomorrow. Oh, no. No. Nobody's going to move in or out of there for at least two weeks. Well, what do you mean? I mean that the little boy in there has measles, and I've just quarantined the place. Oh, what are we going to do, Ozzie? Mr. Bigelow will be here tomorrow, and he won't have a place to stay. I suppose all the hotels are crowded. Crowded? They're jammed. Would you believe it if I told you that last week somebody squeezed the lobby of the Plaza Hotel and people came out of the top like toothpaste? No, I wouldn't. Neither would I. (laughs) You can joke all you want to, but I certainly dread meeting that train in the morning. Yeah, I almost wish I had the measles. If I could only see... Say, do you see what I see? Where? Right there on the sidewalk. Cigarette butt? No, no. Oh, it's a wallet. Well, watch out for the string. Remember how we used to play tricks like that when we were kids? No, this is no trick. Gosh, look here. Somebody's lost a big, fat wallet. Any identification card? Let me see. Yeah? Henry Williams, 2397 Mountain View Drive. Well, you can mail it to him. Boy, this guy's really got a few bucks here. Five, ten, twenty... Forty. Seventy-six dollars. My goodness. Gosh. All I can say is this makes me look pretty cheap. What do you mean, cheap? Well, me with never over two dollars in my pocket, and this Henry Williams, whoever it is, has seventy-six bucks. 
Now, you know just as well as I do, Ozzy, that you're very careless with money. Oh, this guy's careful, huh? Well, at least you'll never lose $76. <laughs> well, if I did lose it, I'd have to lose it at $2 a week. <laughs> Come on, it's almost 4 o'clock. You can write him a note when you get home and then mail it to him after dinner. Hey, look at this. His ration books are in it, too. All right, so you can mail them to him with a wallet. Well, don't you think it'd be much better if we took the books directly to the ration board? Ozzy, you mean walk all the way down there? Well, we've been talking about doing good deeds. Here's our chance. But, Ozzy, it's 23 blocks. Darling, walking 23 blocks with you by my side would be a pleasure. Because you're wonderful. You're beautiful, you're lovely, and I love you. No, Ozzy! <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been to a ration board. Who do you think I ought to see? Anybody that'll see you. Why don't you try that man at the desk over there? Okay, uh, I beg your pardon. Yes? Uh, how do you do? Uh, I came here because... Because you want more gasoline. No, 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 no. I don't want any more gasoline. You don't? No. Let me smell your breath. <laughs> no, listen, you don't understand. Well, it's... friend, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll give you that extra gasoline. In fact, I'll give you all the gasoline you want. What do you think of that? Let me smell your breath. <laughs> Listen, I didn't come here about any extra gasoline. All I want to do well, is... Well, that's perfectly all right. Just fill out this form. No, but I don't Here's want... Here's the form, friend. Just fill it out. Now, what's your name? Ozzy Nelson. But listen... Ozzy Nelson. Uh, occupation? Orchestra leader. Occupation non-essential. <laughs> now, where were you born? You don't understand. We came here about a ration book that was lost. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? That'll be window C. Just sign an affidavit and tell them where you think you lost it, and they'll give you another one. Well, we don't want another one. No, we've got somebody else's book. Well, don't you know it's against the law to use somebody else's book? <laughs> uh, pardon me. Uh, J uh, Harriet. Yes? Why don't I just mail this ration book to the man along with the wallet? Well, that's a wonderful idea, Ozzy. How in the world did you ever think of it? Oh. Ozzie has convinced Harriet that the best thing to do about the wallet they found is to return it in person to the owner. We find them driving to the other side of town. It's a typical California evening. <laughs> now, I'm glad we changed our minds about my, uh, mailing that wallet. This Mr. Williams might have worried all night about it. I suppose you're right. As long as we're doing a good deed, we might as well go all the way. Yeah. Boy, this rain is really coming down. I'll say it is. You know, I kind of like riding in the rain when it's raining, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> it gives you such a cozy feeling. Yes, it does. Of course, I think it would be much cozier if we had the top up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about the top. It just doesn't seem to work. Well, aren't you supposed to push that bottom button? No, I pushed that button once. What happened? It opened a bridge in Seattle. <laughs> you know, I really believe you keep this top down just to tell that stale joke. No. Well, there's one thing sure, it can't rain any harder than this. What did you say, Harriet? I, I said it's the first time I've ever been swimming with all my clothes on. <laughs> I see what you mean. Gosh, I'm still so worried about that apartment for the Bigelows. Uh-oh. What's the matter? Don't look now, but there's a man in a uniform riding a motorcycle, and he's following us. Forget about it. It's probably Nelson Eddy on his way over to visit Jeanette McDonald. <laughs> okay, buddy, pull over there! Well, 
Hello, officer, where's the fire? Uh, right down the... Hey, wait a minute. I'm supposed to say that. We weren't speeding, officer. I know you weren't. Well, then what'd you stop us for? Well, my friend, the next time you make a left turn, see that you put your hands out. But I did, honest. Feel my sleeve. It's still wet. Tell that to the judge tomorrow. It'll be dry by tomorrow. <laughs> That's very funny. Let's have your license, please. All right, here it is. Say... Say, this license here. Are you the Ozzie Nelson who's on the radio? Oh, that's right. Well, gee, it's nice to meet you. And are you Harriet Hilliard? Uh, yes. Oh, gee, I listen to you every week. You know, I've never heard you two sing my favorite song. What song is that? The trolley song. Would you do a special favor for me and sing it, huh? Here? Yeah, would you, for me, would you mind? Well, seems sort of silly, officer, but here goes. Harriet usually sings the first part of it. With my high starch collar and my high top shoes And my hair piled high upon my head I went to lose a jolly hour on the trolley And lost my heart instead with his light brown derby and his bright green tie, he was quite the handsomest of men. I started to yen, so I counted to ten, then I counted to ten again. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart string. For the moment I saw her, I fell. Chug, chug, chug went the motor. Bum, bum, bum went the brake. Thump, thump, thump went my heartstrings. When she smiled, I could feel the car shake. I tipped my hat, then I took a seat. She raised her eyes, and I was swept right off my feet. I said, oh, she said, you fool. She looked so luscious, I was starting into drool. Buzz, buzz, buzz went the buzzer. Plop, plop, plop went the wheel. Stop, stop, stop went my heart sing. As he started to leave, I took hold of his sleeve with my hand. And as if it were planned, me and it was grand just to stand with his hand holding mine to the end of the line. Gee, that was great. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your singing it just for me. Well, thank you, officer. It was a pleasure. Yeah, gee, I'd know your voices anywhere, and I want you to know that I always listen to you on the radio. I wouldn't miss you. My wife and my kids, we think you're wonderful. Say, I wonder if you'd mind signing my book for me, huh? Oh, I'd be delighted to. There you are. Oh, thank you. Here's your copy. Be in court tomorrow at nine. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I think this is the house here. Is it uh, 2397? Yes, that's the number that was in the wallet. Well, at least we know we have the pleasure of making somebody very happy today. Yes. It'll be worth all the trouble we've gone to when we see their faces light up. They're going to be so happy. Uh, ring the bell, would you? Yes? Uh, good evening, Mrs. Williams. Yes? We found a wallet that belongs to your husband. Yes, this wallet here. Let me see it. Yes, this is his wallet. It has $76 in it. Well, where's the other four dollars? Did you take your reward out in advance? Well, it, it, it only had seventy-six dollars in it when we found it. Look, Mrs. Williams, my husband and I drove all the way over here to return this wallet. Yes, and we live way at the other end of town. Why didn't you leave the wallet where it was and let somebody find it who lives closer to us? <laughs> you mean 
You don't think we should have picked the wallet up off the curb? No, because my husband is out looking for it, and now he won't find it. I must say you're not very appreciative. Oh? Uh, have you folks had your dinner yet? Uh, why, no, we haven't. You're going to be awfully hungry by morning. Good night. <laughs> Keep doing nice things for people and everything turns out wrong. What a night. Let's not even mention the fact that Mr. Bigelow and family are arriving tomorrow with no place to live. Gosh, Harriet, I hate to say this, but I think we're lost. I can't see out. Where do you think we are? On the bottom of Lake Arrowhead. <laughs> certainly looks like it, doesn't it? I wish that windshield wiper hadn't washed away two hours ago. Well, I guess it could be worse. We could run out of gas or get a flat tire. I'd hate to fix a flat tire in this rain. Look, let you and I not even think about having a flat tire. We might have one by just thinking about it. Yeah, let's not even think about it. Me and my big fat thoughts. Something tells me we now have a tire that needs to be fixed. Well, come on, aren't you going to get out of the car? Well, naturally, I don't expect you to jack it up with me sitting in it. <laughs> All right, funny man. Okay, honey, out we go. Where'd he go? <laughs> Ozzy, are those bubbles you? Oh, stop yelling. I'm over here. Come on, I'll help you out of the car. I'm scared. Are you kidding? It's not even over your head. <laughs> come on, the last one in's a rotten egg. Here I come. <laughs> Boy, it sure is lucky I have a sense of humor. Well, I haven't, and I'm the one who's sitting in the mud. <laughs> Give me a hand, will you? Here we go. One, two, three, eat. I'll bet I look a mess What'd you say? I said I'll bet I look a mess Well, that is a rather unusual place to be wearing a mud pack <laughs> Ozzy, look at this mud and water You can't fix a tire here ah, I guess you're right, this is awful Well, there's one thing left Let's start walking Like we've been walking for hours. Where are we? I know exactly, but at least we're in a civilized community. There's nothing but big apartment houses around here. Ooh, I'm glad the rain stopped, but that wind's mighty cold. You think maybe we've walked all the way to Chicago? <laughs> you on the head. The wind must have blown it down. Oh, gosh, what a wallop. The good thing it was only a glancing blow. It might have brained me. Or am I bragging? <laughs> hey, am I seeing things? Look at that sign that hit you. Does that say... It certainly does. It says apartment for rent. Did you say apartment for rent? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, so sorry, young fella. I, I do, I do hope that you're not hurt bad. You see, I was up there hanging that sign when all of a sudden the wind blew. Ooh, like that there. And that old sign slipped out of my hand. <laughs> Like that there and fell down all, all, all the doubt and landed right on your head. Shoot! 
May I congratulate you, sir, on a remarkably graphic and dramatic description of the event? Including sound effects. No. Oh, it's really nothing. Oh, now... <laughs> now, just to get down to the point, you have an apartment for rent. Mm. I have a big lump on my head, a brother-in-law who is a lawyer, and some friends who need an apartment desperately. Ooh. Say no more, folks. Say no more. The apartment's yours. Just follow me. <laughs> Harriet, did I hear him right? Did he say the apartment is ours? That's what the man said. He said it. Gosh, this warm bed feels wonderful. Yeah, there's no place like home. You see, Harriet, what I said was proved tonight. I did a good turn for somebody, and even if it wasn't appreciated, it came back to me. I returned that wallet, and through doing that, I found an apartment for my friend. I guess you're right, Ozzy. I'll bet it makes you feel good all over. Oh, yes, I feel great about it. Well, that's good, dear. But I was just thinking... What, dear? Isn't it too bad you have pneumonia? <laughs> This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.